Okay, it's time, so let's start. Um, I'm a Geek product geek from Denix, and I present challenges in reducing network virtualization overheads in software and hardware aspects. Okay, um, so um, I talk about network virtualization uh, as uh, for there, um, I give two use cases. So first one is KVM, so it's kind of obvious. So KVM creates virtual machines, and virtual machines may have some virtual network interfaces, so, um, and require virtual network. And containers is also kind of somewhat, um, uh, require, containers kind of require some isolated networks too, so it's also kind of network virtualization. And so, and there are various opportunities to um, improve network virtualization. And in this presentation, we present one of each for the software and hardware-based approaches. Uh, first, I describe how I discuss software network virtualization. So um, there are two components of software network virtualization in Linux. Um, the first one is a kernel top driver. Um, that creates virtual R2 or R3 interfaces for the user space. Uh, the other one is pre-hostnet, and it accelerates the interaction with the trap driver uh, for KVM. It implements the whole data path of the virtual interface in the kernel to reduce the number of context switches to the user space for KVM. The control path still needs to be implemented in the user space. Um, it minimizes the complexity in the kernel and provides some flexibility. Um, then now uh, let's discuss the disc receive sharing program in the software network virtualization context. Uh, today, uh, high performance comp computers typically provide multiple hardware threads. So it is essential to distribute the CPU packets to them to utilize those hardware threads. However, there is also a um, contradicting goal, and that is to keep data locality. If packets for one connection get distributed to different threads, the threads we need to exchange information about the packets, so that uh, is quite inefficient. So the solution is to achieve this country goals is called receive sharing. Receive sharing is to distribute packets according to the hash of something called flow. Flow is identified with packet information like IP addresses and TCP or UDP ports. This ensures packets for flow will be delivered to a particular thread. Unfortunately, uh, receive sharing causes another problem for virtualization. Um, the idea of but receive sharing is to keep packets local to threads. However, in a naive implementation of virtualization, both the host and guest will perform receive sharing independently, and that has JJ locality if they use different receive sharing policies. And we cannot implicitly assume that the host and guest will use the same receive sharing policy. Um, for example, physical network interfaces often implement receive sharing policy called receive side gating. This is a very old one and from Windows based area and uses topless hash function. On the other hand, Linux also implements a software solution called receive packet sharing. And today, it uses Cphash as a faster and more secure algorithm. Um, it also enables an uh, advanced feature called receive processing that uh, tracks uh, thread processing packets. So, for example, the host may be used RSS if the host has RSS capable hardware. However, the guest will not be aware of that and may employ Cphash based RPS. And that in that case, it will result in inconsistent receive steering and hard data locality. Um, 
the cab driver uh, has a default mechanism to avoid such situation called AutoMQ. Um, with AutoMQ, the top driver uh, remembers the uh, receives receive queue index chosen by the guest for a flow. And when the driver transmits the packet of the device flow to the guest, it reuses the remembered index so that the thread handling the connection will receive it. This is quite elegant approach. And it automatically does light sync, no need of any kind of negotiation between the host and guest. Um, but it also has some disadvantages. So first, this approach is stateful, so it can track only limited number of flows and does not work with new unknown connections. And also, it doesn't work with connectionless protocols. Second, um, it ignores um, the direction of flow, so it reduces the hash entropy and causes more hash conflicts. So automatic is quite an elegant approach, but it's not a suitable word. Um, an alternative approach is to let the guest negotiate the use of RSS with bad IO. Um, this ensures the host performs receive steering a year for the host as the guest. Um, unlike OTMQ, RSS is stateless and provides um, configuration options to handle specific workers for the guest. Um, this advantage of RSS is, is that RSS cannot deal with guest straight migration. Um, there are already um, two implementations of RSS um, in QM and eBPF RSS. Um, in QM, RSS was imp implemented as a reference for Butterfly's RSS feature. Um, it is not expected to bring performance improvement, it's just a reference. So, um, and it adds additional layer of receive sharing between the chap driver and the guest, so it's, it's, it doesn't have a benefit, yeah, performance benefit. And it is also incompatible with pre-hostnet because in KMR, RSS requires user space benefits. So um, it's for like experimenting and understanding how RSS should work in Bartio's context. The second one, the uh, EBPF RSS is, uh, as the name suggests, it uses EBPF and um, intends, intended, is, is intended for real usage. Um, so EBPF sharing program is a mechanism of implemented in top devices that allows user space to replace uh, the auto MQ and the default steering policy with custom steering policy. So it can, uh, it allows customizing the receive steering on host without duplicating work. Uh, so it can bring real performance benefit. Um, it is also compatible with vhost because the receive steering work happens in the kernel. Um, one downside of EPPF sharing program is that it requires privilege. Um, it is um, not a practical problem considering that network virtualization often requires a uh, privilege operation for other purposes anyway. Um, and in fact, um, there is a part for reverse to uh, delegate um, the privilege operation um, to reverse from QMU. So using these approaches, we can um, use eBPF sharing program seamlessly. Um, now, uh, I present yet another solution for to enhance receive steering, that is hash reporting. Hash reporting is to pass hashes computed by the host to the guest through Butterfly interface. Um, so this can save duplicate hash calculations in the host and guest. And it also means that the host and guest will have consistent hash values by definition. 
However, it does not mean that it can um, obstruct OCMQ or RSS. Hash reporting is just to pass hash values, and it does not care how to use these hash values. So it's still necessary to uh, negotiate how to negotiate the usage of hash values to have in uh, have consistent receive sharing. Hash reporting is also it's just passing hash values, so it lacks any kind of configuration. And finally, uh, Windows requires to enable RSS and hash reporting at once, so RSS is mandatory for this particular platform. Um, I have posted patches for Linux and came to implement hash reporting for the chap driver and pre host. Um, next, I describe how I implemented hash reporting. For hash reporting, we need to pick up some hash values to report uh, to the guest. For OTMQ, um, the chap driver will use hashes computed by hardware if available, and for the black to the software computed hash values. Um, the program is a EBPF sharing program compatibility. Um, EBPF sharing program does not expose computed hash values to the kernel, so um, we can uh, use this hash reporting mechanism with EBPF sharing program in the current form. Um, and this EBPF sharing program mechanism can relies on legacy context related interface. And uh, each entered feature freeze, so we cannot extend it anymore. And the latest uh, uh, interface mechanism of EBPF is called KFUNX. And that is such a um, nice one, but it is not UAPI, so in time. In the context of virtualization, well, um, the other relevant APIs like KBM or Brehost are uh, already UAPIs, so it's kind of misaligned. So um, it, yeah, uh, I didn't choose that option. Um, to make hash values computed for RSS available to the kernel, I'm also proposing to uh, implement RSS in the kernel instead of using eBPF. So, um, and this RSS implementation gets activated by Ion Control, so it is intended to be a normal UAPI, just like other uh, pre host or KBM APIs. And this Ion Control will not require any privilege as bonus. Um, on the other hand, this iron control is specific to RSS, is, so it, is, it does not intend to replace EBPF sharing mechanism. Uh, EBPF sharing program will be useful for evaluating new recipe steering algorithms or implementing application specific policy. Um, I talked about OpenMQ. RSS and hash reporting so far, uh, but they are not the only method to enhance receive sharing. Um, there are a few proposals for Butternet, Butterio that implements receive sharing uh, policy. So um, I've introduced some of them. In a header flash is to support packet encapsulation such as Brown. And uh, flow filter is more flexible mechanism than um, RSS, and it can be used to implement accelerated RSS, for example. So to track threads processing packets. RSS context is intended to be used in conjunction with uh, flow filter and allows to have different RSS configurations according to profit. Um, and uh, from the kind of cost perspective, we have the ABPF sharing program mechanism, so technically uh, we can provide any kind of recipe steering policy. 
Uh, however, uh, just exporting a BPF has secret, serious security implication. So if you um, want to uh, expose this capability, you will need to uh, uh, employ some kind of program restriction or out of band privileged operation that is controlled well. Okay, and that was about basic sharing in software network virtualization. Now I describe uh, how discuss hardware network virtualization. So um, software network virtualization includes overheads, each has inherent overheads, and requires uh, complicated optimization, uh, as we had I have shown for receive sharing. So a uh, natural way to solve this problem is to offer this virtualization work to hardware. Um, this kind of, uh, hardware-based approach is more appropriate if you are going to have design a uh, system that is dedicated for virtualization workers, such as servers. And, uh, there is a specification to add such offloading capability to PCI devices, and that is called SRI. Um, it creates something called virtual functions to assign resources of the PCI devices to guests. And the guests, uh, the host can also perform necessary configuration, such as packet switching and um, virtual functions before assigning virtual functions to guests. So, um, uh, it should solve this uh, virtualization problem and allow to uh, offload uh, this uh, network virtualization work. Yeah, um, at least that's the idea. Um, however, unfortunately, uh, there are also scenarios where SRV is, SRV hardware is not very really good at. So that is the container in virtual machine scenario. Um, containers also often need, need network virtualization, isolated network. So container in virtual machine results in nested kind network in some sense. So, and, and SRV cannot deal with this nested situation and prevents uh, VMs from uploading container virtual networks to the hardware. Our idea to tackle this challenge is to emulate SRIB. Um, by emulating SRIB, we can add the way to, uh, for virtual machines to configure offloading. Here, emulation only means to add a software-defined control path for configuring network offloading. So the data path can be still offloaded with VDPA and will not be impacted with this emulation. Um, we already have some uh, part series that implements SRB emulation for game. So uh, we evaluated performance improvement by offering virtual network packet switching to the hardware when SRB is in place. This SRB emulation code, however, uh, lacks the mechanism to part configure packet switching, so it's not very useful uh, in practice. But it, and, but we can still have some kind, some numbers by letting the host configure packet switching on behalf of the guest. Um, we measure throughput and latency uh, between external host and container on where. Um, with this evaluation, we confirmed offloading Java's UDP transfer throughput. Uh, it also reduced UDP round trip latency to two thirds. So um, it's quite remarkable numbers. Now, then, um, I'll discuss about implementation and the kind of progress of implementation in Qubit, uh, which is I'm a of 
um, there was the first SRL wave uh, emission call post, uh, posted in 2014 for an internet network interface uh, called IZB. And in 2019, Butterfly gained SRL wave support. However, and the SRL wave emission work for game uh, stopped while after that. So um, I went to took over the IGB purchase and upstream in 2023. And now I'm working on adding SRV emulation for Bat.io. And the changes to add SRV emulation to Bat.io is uh, mostly ready. And yeah, and it's likely uh, I hope it's it will land in the next version of Kimi. Um, however, um, just adding SRV doesn't mean um, we will be immediately be benefited from that. So we need to use this SRV feature and to add interfaces to configure some offloading. The latest part I will draft as a concept of device groups that it works as a foundation for such offloading interfaces. Um, there are already a few proposals that improve device groups in the battery mailing list. Um, for example, there is an RFC patch to uh, patch list to add interfaces to inspect the statuses and setting MAC addresses of batch of functions. Um, I have talked about packet switching um, before that, and there's no possible proposal for packet switching feature. So it is, so, and there is uh, some other, um, there are some um, remaining open programs that can be implemented uh, solved with device groups idea. Dwayne, uh, I draw the conclusion. First, I discussed the receive sharing program as a network virtualization program. Uh, the top driver uh, employs a mechanism called AutoMQ by default, and it is also possible to use RSS that is implemented in the user space or UBPA. Hash reporting is in progress. Uh, of implementation and patches for Linux and KML on many groups for review. Um, there are few proposals for the battery specification to enhance receive sharing, such as inner head flash for filter and RSS context. So um, the battery specification is uh, even growing. Next, I discuss SRV and its program with the container in Brim scenario for hardware based virtualization. Employing SRV emulation can upload configuring offloading in virtual machines for such as nested, nested virtualization scenario. The latest battery specification provides foundation to use SRV called device groups to add interface to configure offloading. So, um, and so uh, the remaining open program is to how to use this device group mechanism to actually implement um, useful offloading mechanism. Yeah, uh, so this is all, and uh, well, uh, 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 yeah, actually, I'd like to thank you, uh, Vashizu, from NTT Open Source Software Center for providing some diagrams and benchmark results. Okay, um, that's it. So, any questions? Yes, Is it a question or you just stretch it? <laughs> Why are you saying that? Uh, RSS hash is not available in the eBPF program since you have like XDP hints and you can request RSS hash from uh, the hardware descriptor. Uh, 
Um, well, first and uh, uh, well, uh, well, we are doing all of this RSS work in Stroker instead of Cutter. Yeah, um, Chucky from Why Bakai you got this RSS in the spec? However, um, we cannot uh, rely on the rely on the hardware to compute hard. RSS hash values because uh, the top devices may have uh, the virtual machines may have different uh, RSS configurations, so that may result in different uh, results. So um, that makes impossible to re just reuse the hardware RSS. Uh, hardware computed RSS values. So we need to implement this in software, in user space or eBPF. And when using eBPF, well, um, yeah, we do calculate the hash values. So in theory, we should be able to use these hash values, but the problem is that we don't have an uh, interface for that. And we cannot extend the interface because it's in feature freeze. So that's, the, that's why um, I opted to uh, implement IO control for RSS and use it for hash reporting. Okay, makes sense, thanks. More questions? I have, uh, mm? Yes. So, your extensions with a MAC address and the uh, status uh, programming kind of sound like um, it could be a, a special uh, case of a general, uh, you know, um, need to support provisioning of, of virtual machines. So uh, isn't it like a a good idea maybe to generalize it at some provision general provisioning interfaces um well uh, uh but first of all uh, it's not my uh, proposal it's some um, proposal floating on the mailing list and well uh, uh the idea is just to let the um let the um Operating system using virtual IO device to uh, configure uh, this kind of uh, settings. So, uh, if uh, like uh, if you are managing the host and have running some virtual machines on top of it and exposing virtual devices to virtual machines, and then um, uh, you don't need to use this mechanism. Um, you are of, you are controlling the host, and you can set MAC addresses of uh, battery devices uh, in, with uh, normal uh, 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 device configuration mechanism, came or reboot has. So uh, uh, it's not relevant in that case. However. Um, we are considering about the case that the guest that controlling the guest that uses part IO uh, needs to configure these part IO devices. Uh, so, independently from what the host intended. So, in that case, uh, well, um, it's it makes sense to um, delegate this work to guest and provide uh, configurability instead of kind of controlling everything from the host. So that's the idea of this device group things. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> we have a little gift for you.